how often it is that I've told people about single sourcing in Word, and they said, no, nah, you, you can't do that. Word, Word doesn't do that. And it's like, yeah, yes, it does. I do it every day. <laughs> um, un unfortunately, uh, a lot of people don't recognize that Word is a powerful program since they've, they've only used Word for very simple things. They, they don't realize that it is, you know, since they, they, that you can do very sophisticated things with it. Uh, it is, uh, it is an open development platform. If you want to start uh, writing scripts and, and what have you with Microsoft Word, you don't have to buy a developer kit. You can actually get started and, and do these things yourself. You, uh, and uh, it gives you some freedom from IT with a lot of other tools that if you want to do something, if you want to expand the application in some way or another, you need to talk to IT and ask them to give up valuable resources to help you. So anyway, uh, as you can probably tell, I am a word nerd. <laughs> so let's let's get this started now. Okay, I was you know when I was looking at some comics yesterday, I found this one. I found myself thinking, hey, is this what tomorrow's meeting is going to be like? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be speaking to a number of distinguished writers and editors uh, in this meeting of the, of the monthly meeting of the Obsessive Compulsive Editing Disorder Support Group. One, one writer yells, no, wait, I'm not quite ready to submit it yet. Just need to go over it one more time. So anyway, let's keep going here. Of course, that, that uh, comment, that comic has nothing to do with, with with our presentation, but uh, so let's let's talk about what we're doing here today. We are talking about the smart ways to reuse content in Microsoft Word. Um, I, I, before we get started, I want to make it clear I am not advocating that we reuse content instead of writing new content when it's necessary. Uh, Reusing content is just kind of a, a necessary evil. In, in the ideal circumstance, uh, and there's many distinguished writers in this group, I'm sure a lot of you will agree, that it is in the ideal world, all of our deliverables would have unique information. There would be no overlap. But we live in the real world where certain things must be, must be single sourced. Uh, and if you need to, if you need to if you need to reuse content it's good to do it in a way where you make an edit one time and you distribute it to all of the places where it, it where it's useful okay so uh single sourcing in word takes a little creativity uh you you end up repurposing features that were that were devised for something else in the name of single sourcing uh i i like being able to think think out of the box like in this way, I think it's helped me in my career. And uh, hopefully uh, my in, in my talking about these features, even if you don't use Word, it may help you to think more creatively about the tools that you're using. Okay, we're not gonna talk about renditioning to multiple formats like HTML or online help. Uh, great subject, but out of our scope. Mm, and I originally I was I was excited about talking about SharePoint and Visual Basic for applications. Uh, we we really don't have time to talk about these things. So if you use Office, I highly encourage SharePoint. Uh, Visual Basic, you're if you get into single sourcing in a big way, you're going to have to do some 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 scripting in Visual Basic. Uh, I have, since I've been doing this for a long time, I have lots of scripts that I have at my disposal. If anyone is interested, uh, let me know. I, send me an email and I'll, I'll send you some scripts. You will have to edit them for your own purposes though. Uh, so anyway, let's, let's keep going. So what's wrong with copy and paste? Um, the writer in this case uh, 
keep away from moving parts is a is a warning that has appeared in all of my manuals because we I've documented machines that will kill you if you use them wrong. Uh, so, but the the writer in this case has copied this one warning into three different documents, and unfortunately, he did not notice that there is an uh, that the M is is capitalized when it shouldn't be. And, and so now the writer has to visit all three topics to fix this error. I also personally, I, I, I was recently in a circumstance where my technical support number kept changing. Technical support number should be the same in all your documents. <laughs> if you're single sourcing, those sorts of changes are no big deal. You change it once and you're done. Uh, what I really love about single sourcing is that we're all writers here when we are in our zone when life is good we get to hone our prose and polish our prose and get it to, to into the form that we like the most so if you once you do that if you're single sourcing you can in fact get all of your uh you, you can get the best version of your prose and distribute it to everywhere where it's appropriate. Okay, so we're gonna do a brief, we're gonna do a little demonstration right now. Oh, uh, okay. I'm gonna, I, 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 I won't see your chats temporarily. Whoops, okay. So we have two documents side by side here. Um, for the sake of demonstrations, it's just one document. I mean, we, we are just looking at two documents, but you could be linking to four documents, 40, 400, uh, however many documents you have the time and strength and dedication to, to maintain. Uh, you will notice that this, on this side, the, this paragraph and this paragraph are identical, even though we're in two separate documents this version of of the of the this version of the paragraph is gray and that is because it is a field uh, we are we're going to talk more about fields so um so anyway let's make a little change here okay so let's really get the user call the user an idiot a full idiot full keep away from moving parts that'll do it hopefully so now let's go to this side and i clicked inside of i clicked inside of the field and i hit f9 and my change has now been propagated to this other to this other document you make you you make the change once and and eventually all of the fields get updated. Cool. So how is this possible? Well, I, I mentioned that it was a field. Okay, so what is a field in MS Word? A, a field is text or data that MS Word will populate automatically. Uh, if you haven't heard of a field before and you've been using Word, you, you've been using fields. Oftentimes, the date in the document will be the will be a field, so it automatically updates to the current date. Uh, page numbers in your footers are fields, which automatically update to the correct value. Uh, I really like to mess around with formulas in fields. Uh, you can, like in my work, I've often had to display a unit of measure in both uh, standard and in metric. On the metric side, I would create a field that automatically converts the value that I enter for the standard measure. So again, I only have to edit one. Instead of editing two numbers, I just have to edit one. Okay, the field that we were messing around with is a very specific, there's lots of different fields in Word. The one we were messing around with is called include text. What does it do? It links content in one Word file and duplicates it into another one. Okay, syntax is boring but necessary. <laughs> so I, I apologize for going through syntax. 
but it, anyway, uh, fields are, are denoted by curly braces. A, you have to give the name of the field, in this case, include text, and you have to provide the, the path and file name. There's something called a bookmark. We, we'll get into it more later, but for now, we can, we can say that it identifies the information in the file that you want to, to use. If you don't include your bookmark, you will suck in the entire, it, it is optional, and if you don't include it, you will suck in all of the content in the file. So, okay, this is what, what it would look like if you're, if the file you're working, if the files you're working with are on your hard drive and you're in Microsoft Word. This is what it looks like if it, if the file lives in SharePoint. Everything we're doing today works in SharePoint. What is a bookmark? Uh, a bookmark is a unique name to identify a specific section of a Word file. Originally, this was used to find text quickly. Nobody uses it for that anymore. Uh, now it's strictly, now bookmarks are all used almost exclusively for input for fields and scripts. Okay, oops, went too far. So let's go back to our, our demonstration. Um, okay, so over here, I have to expand this so I can see what I'm, I'm doing. Okay, so I clicked in the field and I hit Shift F9. And you, we have our curly braces, include text. And this is the path and name of the file. And this is the bookmark. So I am going, so in, in a field, you can toggle back and forth between the value and the syntax by hitting Shift F9. Now I'm going to highlight my bookmark. I use really long bookmarks because they have to be unique and I generate them using scripts that, that use a timestamp to keep them unique. Okay, so we are now in our other document. And I will bring up the the bookmark dialog box. A good if I use shortcut keys, but a good way of bringing up your if you don't know where it is, a good way of bringing it up is by entering the word book. You and then you click insert. So there we go. We have our bookmark dialog box. I'm going to paste the bookmark that I that I copied and click go to. So here we go. This is the, the text that is bookmarked. Uh, I've set it up so that you can see the bookmark with square braces, I'm sorry, square brackets before and at the end of the, of the bookmark text. Uh, bookmarks can be, let's add a bookmark. I just highlighted a word. I bring up the bookmark and let's call this one George. And there we go. I have a bookmark right there where, where the text was highlighted. And I can be cruel and delete George. So that's that's how you mess around with bookmarks. You you in this case with include text, the bookmark is the way you identify you don't want to suck in the entire manual or the entire word file. You just want to single source the area that is bookmarked. Okay, you know, I, I went over a lot of inform, er, information kind of quickly. Uh, I can see that I'm doing well with time. <laughs> so it might be because I, I might be talking too quickly. Let's just open it up briefly to questions. Does, does anyone have a question? You don't have to at this point. Jose, can you do it with an image? I'm sorry? Can you use an image instead of words within um, the bookmark? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a very good question. I'm sorry I was slow on the take to, to realize what you were, you were asking. Any, you can bookmark anything inside of, of the file. So if I had an image, if, if I had an image right here, 
it would get okay can i how fast am i on the fly i apologize this is a new computer for me i'm working in a new new environment and i have no do i have any pictures to share with you uh, Okay. Uh, you know, I apologize. I have a, this is a brand new computer and you can I, do, a, do a screenshot of your yeah. profile. Do a, a screenshot of your profile. Do a, a snag of your profile and include there. Okay. You know, I, I apologize. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do the image, uh, though I would, uh, I would love, well, okay. Let's see. Okay, that's a really big image. But you can bookmark any content that's in Microsoft Word. And that image is now in the bookmark. It's not terribly pretty, but here we go. I'm going to hit F9. And it is now, it is now a bookmark. It is the image is now part of the bookmark all righty well let's let's keep going here thank you for thank you for the question um cindy pow had a couple questions if you have time sure well let's go ahead uh cindy was wondering if it's case sensitive mm. uh, did the, you mean the, the... the command is the the syntax for include text is not case sensitive. Um, you you can you can capitalize it however you want if that's what you meant. Uh, later on, I'll demonstrate how you can control the case of the of the of the text that is being displayed. Uh, any any other questions? And uh, Cindy also asked. So is this this is how you get around not having referenced graphics, right? Oh, uh, we will talk about, mm, okay, reference graphics are, is a whole other can, can of worms. And my experience with Word is that you only do reference graphics when you have really, really huge, huge images, uh, I, which was my case. Uh, I, I would, I had 400 page manuals with with many many figures and the pdf that would result would be like 50 megabytes uh, that's when you would reference or you would link your graphics that actually has nothing to do with with include text if your if your graphics are huge and you you use link that uh, you use um, the include text field you will still have huge graphics you will still have huge graphics and you will still crash word it's more of a matter of memory. Uh, it's it's more of a matter of managing the computer's memory. So it, 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 that's, I'm sorry, it's kind of besides the point. But so this anything. could be used if you if you wanted to do like a, a, a warning symbol in front of your message that you're going to repeat throughout your document. But I have another question. So what is the impact on the size of the document when you include so many of these? Um, Cross references or bookmarks? Does it have a huge impact or a minimal impact? Uh, I would say it's a minimal impact. However, if you have a really big, if you have big graphics, or Word will Word will behind the scenes move it, move it in there and kind of kind of clunk things up. It, the memory manage management will will start to become a problem. Did, did that answer your question? But oh, by the way, that was a wonderful point though about 
using about your images for for warnings. Uh, that is specifically the way that I I would that I would use when I when I was doing this, I would use my warnings, cautions, and so forth, little images. They were all rep they were they were all in either include text or reference or ref fields so that those images can be changed in one place. So that you just pointed out a very good use of it. Okay. Well what, these are all really good questions, and I, I appreciate your your involvement. Uh, but we should keep going, so we don't we don't run out of time. Okay, so um, let's go and talk about variables. Vari variables are are a very important way, or, or can help you quite a bit in single sourcing. A variable in Word is a word or phrase that changes depending upon what which word file you have open. Variables are often used for product names, as we'll see, and variables can be used in other, in other fields. Uh, right now, we are going to mess around with custom document properties. Uh, that is one way of achieving a, of creating a variable in your, in your document. So, oops, you know, I, I just made a mistake and it's, it's a fun thing to point out. I edited the, the include text field, which is something that's quite natural. You see, you see the field and you want to edit it, but here's what happens. When I update the field, the picture comes back. You have to delete the, if you want to change it, you have to change it in the source. Okay, so. Let's let's talk about creating a custom document variable. I'm going to delete insults. Maybe insulting the user is not a good choice. Let's include the product name here. Keep away from moving parts when working with the. Hmm, that wasn't that was kind of strange. There, when working with the blank product. Okay, so I'm going to replace this with something that's called a custom document variable. Oh, I'm sorry, a custom document property. So let's go to, I, I went to the file menu, go to info, and we are going to properties now. Okay, so the summary tab shows you your standard, your standard document properties, but we want to create our own. If you go to custom, you can, the custom tab, you can create your own document properties. So this one, if I spell it right, is going to be called product. There we go, product. And the value, what I think rubber ducky. Rubber Ducky is a good name for our product. I hit add and OK. And so now let's go back to our document. All right, so I'm going to replace the word blank with control. Let's hit control F9. Control F9 gives us our curly braces. And I'm going to make write, this is a doc property field, not include text, it's called doc property. And the one we just created is called product. Okay, so this is the rubber ducky product. And I just hit save. So now let's go over here. And this is our big old field with this huge graphic in it. I click on, we, I click on the field. I highlight in the field, hit F9, and something funny happened. The name of the product here is Willie's Widget. It, the variable is defined as Willie's Widget in this document, but in this other one, it's, it's, it is defined as Rubber Ducky. 
So let me click on Willie's widget. I hit Shift F9, and you can see that the document property field is, is used within the include text field. Nesting fields and fields unlocks more power in Microsoft Word. But this isn't the only way that we can use. It's not the only way that we can use custom document properties here. Uh, you will notice that we have some broken fields. Error. This is, you don't want this appearing in your document. So let's click over here and we will go shift. We, I'm clicking in the field. I hit shift F9 and we have an include text field. Now I kept this, this, this there's something funny about this. And I, I look at this and I realize, oh yeah, we changed the name of this file. It's not called junky, junky anymore. But I, I click on there, I click on the name of the file and I hit shift F9. And it just so happens that when I created include this include text field, instead of just writing the name of the file as text, I created a custom document property field. This is extremely useful because include text only only allows an absolute path. Okay, um, that what I said is not exactly right, but trust me, you want to stick with absolute paths. Now, since absolute paths are difficult, so they, the path may change, it's a great idea to use a custom document property for the file name. So all, all four of these links use the same file. If I fix it in one place, it will in fact, it will fix all four links. So I click File, Info, Advanced Properties, and I click on the file name. And let's take that Y out. The Y is the problem. It's not junky, it's junk. Okay, so I, I edited it, I hit modify, and now we're going to click okay. All right, so now let's, I'm gonna do control A, which selects everything in, in the document. Everything is now selected. I will hit F9 to update every field in the manual. Uh, every field in the file. So you could, in this way, you can you can fix several links all at once. I mentioned that using a. I mentioned that Visual Basic is really handy if you're going to get into single sourcing in a big way. You really want to uh, get into Visual Basic. This is an area where, where it helps. Uh, I have several scripts that allow you to change custom document properties across several files, and you don't have to go through that clunky interface. I, I actually, so, so if there's any interest in that part, I will, I will share. Um, this is also a good stopping point to see if there's any questions out there. We don't have to have, if you don't have questions, that's cool. But I, I realize uh, I've gone over a lot of info. If there are questions, we can take care of them now. Okay, well, why don't we, let's see. I just realized I'm not showing my, my uh, chats. Unmuted. I could in fact have lots of chats. We do okay. have a couple of questions, uh, Jose. Okay, Cindy. Yes, I, 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 I now see the chats, and my apologies to Cindy Powell. I meant absolute paths when you, not absolute paths. So, you, it, with an include text field, it really. It, it wor really works out much better if you include the drive number, uh, the letter of the drive, and the entire path to the file. My, I, I apologize. If this were a SharePoint site, we would have a, a URL 
that specifies the location of the file. Okay. Uh, and then Laura asked, do all the documents um, have to be in the same location to use single sourcing? Hmm. No, they don't. Um, since I, I would say it's a good idea to have to have a sensible structure for for where you keep things, in which case they are somewhere in the same vicinity of each other. But since you are using absolute paths, you you're, since you are using an absolute path, you can in fact put it everywhere. The danger you run into is that your user, if somebody else needs to work on 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 the in the same word file, they have to have access to whatever path you 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 use. So if you put it on your your hard drive, you link to something that's on your hard drive, but the file is on the file server. They actually you, you will other people will see a broken link. I, I think I've gone overboard there on your answer. But and then Angela asks, um, if you um, do I have to manually create these custom fields in each document? Is there a way to transfer them from one document to another? And that's from um, Angel. Yes, and, and thank you, Angel. Uh, <laughs> the, I, that, that's a good question. Uh, it is true that um you have to use visual basic to uh be able to transfer your your you have to tra to transfer your variables from one document to another you need visual basic and i i have some scripts that can help in that regard and then cindy pal asks do you have an example of an absolute path to a document on a sharepoint site Okay, I actually no longer have access to SharePoint. Um, so, but I can show you in my presentation. This is an example of, of a SharePoint. It's a silly example of, of a SharePoint URL. Um, all too often, there, it is a, it is, all of the all of the locations are expressed as URLs in SharePoint. Um, I would these th these paths are unusually short for for the sake of demonstration, but th this is what it would look like. And you could yeah. actually open this up in a web browser if you if you pasted that link into the web browser. And so, Jose, those are all the questions from the chat. Does anyone else have any questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much for, for uh, helping with, with the questions on that front. Uh, why don't we get back into it? Okay. So, the, the other field that is, is important is a ref field. A ref field is different from an include text field in that you, it does the same thing, but it only works within the same document. Since all since the source content and the target content exists in the same document, you're, it, it's actually a much simpler sort of field. Uh, ref, refs are used mostly in cre creating cross-references. Okay, so let's get back into our document. All right, so um, we have we have a heading here, and let's let's create a cross reference to this heading. So, all right, I am calling up my bookmark. The first step is to create a bookmark, and we use George before. So, hey, let's use Ringo. All right, so I have bookmarked that heading. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm going to create a cross reference to it. Let's go C. And now I create a field. Let's do Control F9. And remember, our bookmark is called Ringo. Since we don't have 
since we are not using any switches, it's not a complicated field. In this case, the ref, the name of the field is optional. So I hit F9. So that is a quick and dirty sort of cross-reference. Um, I mm, uh, now let's. I'm going to use a, a little Visual Basic to demonstrate a more sophisticated sort of cross-reference. Uh, okay, so these are my macros, and I have selected my script, and I click Run. Okay, my script is giving is prompting me to give to to enter my bookmark. So I type Ringo, enter. Do I want a comma? No, this is the end of a sentence, so we need a period. Do you want a period? Yes, I want a period. Okay, and so what? This is kind of funny. I can't see that part of my screen, so I'm going to do that. All right, so here we go. This, you can see the cross reference is a little more, is, is more sophisticated. We put in the word section, we have punctuation, and to help the user along, we give them the paragraph number. Let's go ahead and I clicked in this field, I hit Shift F9. This is a different field, and I'm going to hit Shift F9 as well. Both fields are almost identical, except this one has the slash R. The slash R switch says, don't give me the bookmark text, but give me the paragraph number from the bookmark text. Right? Um, okay, the slash H makes this a hyperlink. So when I create a PDF of this, it becomes a clickable link. Char format is a formatting switch. It basically says, um, give, allow me to, to apply format. If I apply formatting to the field itself, it should hang on to the formatting regardless. You know, it's kind of funny. I haven't tried this in so long, and this is a demonstration. Let's eat. Chart format is kind of buggy, so I don't know how well this is going to work. I I formatted. Okay, let's let's make this whole thing bold. All right. So I made the whole thing bold, and now I'm going to going to update the field. And it hung on to it. Right, I, I update the field and it's still bold. If chart format were not there, we would not, it would not, it would, when you update it. Oh, okay. It, it, it added my old nemesis, merge format. Merge format has no purpose but to screw up your, <laughs> your documents. Okay, so let's do, do this. Let's delete a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to delete chart format, just that you see that now if I hit update, it should lose the formatting. Let's see, there we go. All right, now I actually have an extra space here and it's because I made a boo-boo. And I had, I deleted, I, I accidentally had an extra space over there, there and it, it brings over exactly what you enter. So now that typo is gone. Okay. Um, what else can we can I show you here? Mm -hmm. Let's do Shift F9. Oh, it's kind of fun. It's still bold, bold and under under the covers. Okay. Instead of H, let's make this a P. So what what happens? It becomes above. So you and let's okay so it becomes above the slash p switch will allow you to indicate whether the source 
the bookmark, the thing that you're referencing is above or below the current point. Mm, let's get rid of that. Let's. Okay, so let's change this back to an H. And let's get rid of this. Okay, so both fields are identical. Let's do something else with the switch. Let's go slash star upper. Okay, so now the the it is all in uppercase. Mm -hmm. If I just hit caps. Okay, so now each letter is each letter is is now capitalized. So fields are actually really, really powerful. Oh, thank you, Cindy. It's so nice of you to say that. Um, all right. And Jose, uh, Laura had a question. Do you need to create cross references to headings? And she's yeah. created heading. Do you have to create a cross reference to a heading? Isn't that a part of what Word does automatically? I have cross referenced to headings before using uh, or without creating um, bookmarks first. I think Word creates bookmarks for textiles as headings. Yeah, okay. sorry. That first one was supposed to be bookmark. Uh, yeah, I don't think you need to create a bookmark for a heading. If you if you use re words um, cross referencing feature, which I actually forgot about because I think it's caca. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> that's it, what I've used in the past. So, okay, I, I'm sorry. I hope I haven't insulted you. Uh, oh by... no, <laughs> <laughs> it's all I knew how to do. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, here here's what happens. Um, if if you if you work in it at what, what I found is that where, if you use their feature, Microsoft's uh, GUI to do it instead of your own scripts, it will create a bookmark that's in the background. It, it, if, it, if it is a system generated bookmark, it's there. Um, however, you can't see it and you can't change it. Um, my bookmark, since I enter them manually, have a, a opening and closing so I can see the parameters and I can redefine them. Um, so, and you think, hey, maybe that's no big deal, but let's say if you start adding, if, if I started adding text here, here we go. I want the word the Lord to be the first word in, in the sentence, right? I don't want it. Oops, my bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so this is this is now um, a th this is what can happen with your bookmarks. This bookmark is not supposed to be at the beginning of, of okay. You see what happened with my bookmark? It it was the bookmark was supposed to be just in just on the heading, but instead it it leaks into the next line. Um, that's that's a typo. I, since I can see this bookmark, I can redefine it. I can fix this problem. If it is generated by micro, if it is a hidden bookmark generated by Word, you will get these errors and it, funny things now will happen. So now let's update this field. Uh oh, why do I have, if I'm working in Word, I'll go, why do I have a paragraph mark here? Well, let me kind, let me try to delete that paragraph mark. Right. Little line is it won't it won't allow you to do that. Um, since this is a user 
with a user-defined bookmark, I can change the boundaries. I can make it, I can hit add, and it changes the bookmark to what I want it to be. Oh, yeah, that's helpful because in the past I've, uh, I've tried to cross-reference to like a figure title and I had a page break before the figure and it would put a page break before the cross-reference too, which put a page break in an odd place. And I, was <laughs> I just ended up removing the cross-reference because I was like, I'll just tell them figure one or whatever and they have to find it themselves. Because yeah, it, it was a big pain when it did that. Okay, well, I recommend Dr. Jose's bag of home remedies. I, okay. my, my, VBA, my VBA for, for doing cross-references is better than that. Anyway, I'm being silly. I, I, I apologize. But um, I think this is everything that I, I intended. Oh, wait, are there, I don't want to stop prematurely if there are more questions. Okay. I think I was the only one who just had one, but does anyone else have anything? I don't see anything else in chat. Okay, well, let's just go over a few more slides, or actually really just one more slide. And these are uh, the resources. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to distribute our, our, um, our slides to everybody, but uh, I would like to, to make these resources available. Uh, this one is of particular interest. If you're going to use the include text field, there are some gotchas involved where, and I, I don't want to spread gotchas. <laughs> I want to give my peers uh, good information. So if you're going to use include text, you, you really should read this article. So, so you can be aware of some potential problems that, that can come up. Um, and this is just my, my contact information. I believe that we are, we are out, of, out of time. So thank you. Thank you, Cindy Powell, for clapping so loudly through chat for me. Um, I guess I, I should probably yield the floor so everyone can have their 10 minute break before the next, the next session. Hey, thanks, Thank Jose. You. Yes, we're gonna uh, break for 10 minutes and then when we come back, we'll have Kelly Schrank's session on building a better checklist for your communication tasks. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me, and, and you've been a, a really great host. And uh, to remind everybody, we will be uh, distributing the slides, um, and we are recording the sessions. So if you need a refresher, because I've got lots of notes that I want to check up on using Word for myself on from this one, uh, you'll be able to um, after the presentation, after the conference. Shall I go ahead and set up mine? This is Kelly. <clears throat> um, go ahead and set up. Uh, we'll make sure that you are indeed a presenter. Yeah, I, I'm not yet. You have the floor. 